Hey, greetings. Praise the Lord. This is Clinton. To those of you who are in Christ Jesus, I'm Brother Clinton. And welcome again to the Word Prophet channel. I have a short message that I want to express to you. It's because of a, a letter that I got from a young brother this morning who said, Can you go into further detail about the skirts for women and pants for men only? Thank you. And so I wrote him a, an email in response, but I, I felt led to, uh, and I even mentioned in the email that I sent to him that I was going to make a video about this, God willing, today. And I just want to take a few minutes and explain a couple of things to you from the scripture. First of all, I want to let you know that those of you, there are many of those of you out there watching who are not Christians or who may believe that you're Christians, but you haven't necessarily come to Jesus Christ and obeyed the gospel the way that it's written in his word. And for that reason, what I'm about to say is going to rub you the wrong way. It's going to seem wrong to you. Many of you are going to disagree with it. And with all due respect, at the risk of seeming prideful, all I'm speaking is what's written in the Word of God. And so if you disagree with that, my advice to you would be to seek God on it, seek Him in His Word, seek Him in prayer. And before you leave a comment or write to me saying you're wrong or this and that, please seek God in His Word and see that the things that I'm speaking to you are His Word and not my own. Okay. If I were to come on here and speak my own opinion and then say, well, I'm right and you're wrong, then that would be considered prideful. But when I come on here and I speak what the word of the Lord says, and then I make the, the statement with all due respect and without apology that the word that I speak to you is truth and it's not up for debate, that's not pridefulness. That's just me trusting the word of the Lord and speaking it forth. Um, faithfully. That's what I'm commanded to do. The word of the Lord is, is like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. This word is, is like silver that is purified in a furnace seven times. It is pure. It is, there's no error in it. And when I hold up this Bible, this is the authorized King James version of the Bible. Uh, if you speak English, this is the word of God. And this is what I refer to when I speak of the word of God. So in the word of God, it is written in the Psalms. And let's just go there. Psalm 68 and verse 18. The scripture says, Thou hast ascended on high. May God bless the reading of his word. Amen. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. And that part of this verse of scripture was quoted by Paul the Apostle in the letter to the Ephesians. And the rest of the verse is very important for us to read as well. It says, Yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Let me read the whole verse again. Thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive, thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Now I've gone into detail about this in other videos, so I'm not going to do that right now, but this very clearly prophesies in the scripture that there are those people, that there were those people in the Old Testament time that were among the congregation of Israel that were rebellious, but yet the Lord dwelt among them, like the ones in the wilderness who uh, for 40 years were fed by manna from heaven and water from a rock, but yet they were cursed and they went to the grave and to hell because they, the Lord swore in his wrath that they would never enter into his rest. And just like it, the, as, as it was then, so it is now. There are many in the, in the religious arena today who profess to be Christians, and many who are even baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost who have never been born again. And I know that confounds some of you. That's why I paused there. Okay, there are many who speak with tongues and cast out devils in Jesus' name and heal the sick in Jesus' name who have ever been born again, who have never been born again. Well, how can you say that, Brother Clinton? Because Jesus said that. He said, many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name uh, cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? And the Lord will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. How is Jesus going to say, I never knew you, to some people that were doing miracles in his name? How are they doing miracles in his name except it were by the power of his spirit? You see, there's lots of people in the churches who have received the gift of the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues and cast out devils in Jesus' name and heal the sick in Jesus' name who have never been born again. Well, how can you tell if they've never been born again? Because those who are born again are born of this word. Jesus said in Luke chapter 8, verse 11, Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Remember the parable of the sower? Jesus said, now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Peter said in his letter, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. James said, in James 1.18, of his own will begat he us by the word of truth, 
that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. And this is why Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You see, there are many that are operating in the power of the Spirit of God and using the power of the name of Jesus Christ who are not born of the Word of God. And the reason that we can know that is because they don't obey the Word of God. It's just that simple. He that is righteous doeth righteousness, even as he is righteous. Praise the Lord. So there are many in the churches who are not born of this word. They're born of false vines, false Bibles, like the NIV Bible, just for example. There are many, but I'm going to pick on the NIV just for example, because I think the NIV is one of the most ridiculous demonic translations. Um, it's, it's a novel. It's, it's not God's word at all. And there are many people that are born from, from that book. And you can obviously tell them when you meet them, when you speak to them for a few minutes and they open their mouth and they begin to speak, they don't speak as the oracles of God. They speak as the oracles of the NIV Bible and the theologians that are paid to entertain them in the things that they call churches. And they say things like, well, I'm under grace and, <clears throat> and God's my buddy and God's my sky daddy and he loves me uh, unconditionally and regardless of them. And they've never been saved. They've never obeyed the gospel of Christ. They don't know how to be saved from their sins. They don't know that they need to be saved from their sins. And so for that reason, when you try to tell them that the scripture says, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination to the Lord. They come up with many, many, many excuses why they don't think that they should have to obey the word of God. They say, well, that was then, this is now. They say, well, that was the law. Well, you say to them, well, it's also written in the law that thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery. Are you saying that those things are past, that we don't have to obey those things anymore? And, of course, they have no answer to that. So then they come up with other things like, well, there was no such thing as pants back then, or all the, the ridiculous things that they say. Well, the, the fact of the matter is, for those of you who are my brethren, the fact of the matter is, and what I share with people all the time, when... Ever you feel the need to use a public restroom, it's necessary that public restrooms are divided between the genders so that you don't accidentally, if you're a man, go into a woman's restroom. That would be embarrassing and invasive. And so in order to remedy that, there is there are titles on the doors. And just in case you can't read, there are pictures on the doors. And the picture on the men's room is a picture of a man. And the picture on the, on the ladies' room is a picture of a lady. And it's, you know, it's a... It's a, it's a little animated picture, and, and the picture of a lady has a skirt on, the picture of a man has pants on. And that's how people tell the difference between the men's room and the ladies' room. And there's not one person on the planet, regardless of how you might argue, this is a fact, there's not one person on the planet who could walk up to those two doors and seriously and honestly not know which restroom to go into, depending on which gender they are. Everybody knows. Everybody knows that the one that's wearing pants is a man the one that's wearing a skirt as a woman. This is how God by nature bears witness against you. And even as it's written in the scripture in the second chapter of the Romans, and let me share this with you. Romans chapter 2, beginning in verse 13, says, For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness. So even if you've never heard the word of God, even if you've never heard the law of God, even if you've never heard of the Ten Commandments, it is written in your heart that it is wrong to steal, it is wrong to lie, it is wrong to commit adultery, it is wrong to kill. And the fact that that's manifest. The thing that makes that manifest is the fact that if you do those things, you do them in secret because you know that they're wrong and you don't want other people to see them. And so your own conscience bears witness against you. And so the fact that everybody on the planet knows the difference between a man's clothing and a woman's clothing by the, the illustration that I just gave you, by the, the illustrations on the restroom doors, it bears witness against you that you know that pants are for a man Skirts and dresses are for a woman. And you can make up all the excuses in the world why you don't think you should have to obey that. That's between you and God, really. It's, it's really none of my business. It's none of my concern, and I have not the time to sit and, and listen to it. Okay, you can talk to it. You can talk to God about that all day long if you want to. And if he'll allow you, you can talk to him about it when you bow before him at the throne at the judgment. Okay, but I don't want to hear it. 
And if you're a Christian, you should have that same attitude. I don't want to hear it. With all due respect, when I give you the word of God, if you hear it and obey it, then well, we can walk together. But the scripture says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? And then the scripture says that we should speak the same thing and that with one mind we should strive together for the faith of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But if we don't have one mind, if we have two different minds, you and I, whoever you are, okay? And brothers, I'm speaking to you out there as in, in the sense that you're speaking to someone else and sharing with them the word of God. This person professes to be a Christian. You share with them the word of God and he begins to argue about it, okay? When I share with you the word of God, if you agree with it, and obey it, then we can walk together. If you don't want to agree with it, and you want to argue about it, you know, I, I'm going to take my leave. I'm going to go do what I need to do. You know, I'm not going to say God bless you, because I'm not going to bid God's to someone who denies the doctrine of Jesus Christ. But at the same time, I'm not going to have any ill feelings towards you. I'm just going to move on. I'm going to go on my way. I've done my, done my duty. Okay, it's just like there are so many people in the in the, in the denominational churches who have a, how should I say this? They say, well, I'm a Christian and I can drink a beer and watch a football game if I want to, because I'm under grace. Well, okay. <laughs> you know, the Bible doesn't say thou shalt not drink a beer. The Bible doesn't say thou shalt not watch a football game. But I know, because I am a Christian, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, that if you have the Holy Ghost in you and you're born of the word of God, that there is no desire in you to drink a beer or to watch a football game. Why would there be? Why would there be, if you're a man and you've, and you've put away childish things and you've come to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, you've seen his kingdom and you've entered into his kingdom by obeying the gospel and you live and operate in his kingdom every day and he's the head of your life. Why would you want to drink something that would alter your sense of judgment and cause you to become stupid? And why would you want to sit in front of a, 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 a bunch of grown men playing a children's game when the kingdom of God is at hand and people all around you are dying in their sins? Why would you want to do that? You wouldn't want to do that. The scripture doesn't forbid you to do it, but the scripture says that whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you can't do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you shouldn't be doing it. Okay? So to me, as a Christian, that includes sitting in front of a television watching a football game. Now, can I prove that to you from the scripture, that God doesn't want you to watch a football game? No, I can't. If you don't believe the word of God, and you don't want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, and you want to pretend to be a Christian and watch a football game, I can't prove to you from the scripture that it's against God's law for you to watch a football game. And I have no, <laughs> no desire or intention to try to prove that to you. Because I know by the fact that you want to be rebellious and do what you want to do, that you're not going to hear God's word anyway. And the scripture says, a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition, reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. And so in the same way, if you're a woman and you profess to be a Christian, but you're walking around wearing pants, which are, are as a garment that pertains to a man, and I come to you with the scripture and I say, um, the scripture says that the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination to the Lord. And, and then you come at me with, well, let's look at that in the Hebrew. And in the Hebrew, it really means a soldier's uniform, and it doesn't mean the garments of a man, which is ridiculous. I think. Has any of you ever heard that? That's been presented to me a lot of times, mostly by sodomites, but also by feminists and, and rebellious women in the churches as well. Uh, but that's ridiculous. Uh, but they say, yeah, it doesn't mean the garments of a man. It means, uh, you know, and they try to use... Uh, the, the nonsense of theology to tell you that the scripture doesn't mean what it says. Or then they come at you with, uh, well, there was no pants in those days, and everybody wore dresses. and Was there pants in the days of Jesus? Did Jesus wear pants? And all these ridiculous things. Well, none of those things is relevant. The fact is that pants are for a man, and dresses and skirts are for a woman. If you are a child of God, you know that. And if you're not a child of God, you're not going to see that. And so if you are a child of God, and you're trying to explain this to somebody, and that person is not hearing you, and they want to argue about it, and you write to me and say, Brother Clinton, how can I prove this to that person? My answer to you is as my answer was to this young brother this morning. It's not your job to prove it. It's not your job to prove it. The kingdom of God is not up for debate, and it's not a matter of debate. 
the kingdom of God is for little children, and it is for those who hear and obey his word. The scripture says in Revelation 22, 14, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and that they may enter in through the gates into the city. The only way back in to the paradise of Eden is through that flaming sword which turneth every way, and that is the word of God. And my brethren, my sisters, it is on purpose that there are people in the churches who do not believe the word of God. It is on purpose, and it is because of the purpose of God. That's how God has ordained it. And they will not inherit the kingdom of God because they refuse to hear and obey the word of God. In the days when Jesus Christ walked on the face of the earth, he spoke his word, his father's word, to the people of Israel and even to the teachers of Israel, the masters of Israel, and they refused to hear it. And you know what he said to them? He said, why do you not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. And these were the doctors of the law and the Pharisees who had the scriptures memorized. And they knew not only the scriptures, but they knew the letters of the law and the, and the different meanings of each individual letter in the Hebrew alphabet and the deeper meanings of, of, of the things that are written in the scripture, but they could not hear the word of God. Thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. So you see, just because someone might be speaking in tongues or casting out devils or just because they might look really spiritual or just because they might look to be an exemplary Christian, that doesn't mean that they're born of God. The way to tell if someone is born of God is if when you speak this word to them, they hear it and they believe it. And if there is a woman in your church who is wearing pants and you come to her and you give her the scripture and she says, Oh my goodness, I need to check that out. I need to pray about that. And the next day you see her, she says, Brother, thank you for sharing that with me. I've taken all my, my pants and I've thrown them in the garbage. And I'm wearing dresses now because I know that that's what the Spirit of the Lord would want me to do. Then that woman is born of the Word of God. But if you come to a woman who's wearing pants in your congregation and you give her the Word of God and, and she begins to argue and become contentious, then you know that that woman is not your sister. Jesus said, who is my mother and my brethren? My mother and my brethren are these that hear the word of God and do it. I believe it's Luke 8, 21. And so, it's very simple. You don't have to try to explain to the lost people in the churches why we should obey the word of God. You don't have to try to prove to them which garment is for a man, which garment is for a woman or that it's not okay for us to desire to drink beer and watch football. If that's the desire of their heart, and they want to argue and try to find a loophole so that they can do those things, let them be. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. If they're not convinced by hearing the word of God, then neither will they be convinced as much as you try to explain it to them. This is my message to you today. In Jesus' name.